Hello, my HD friends on the Media Speaks. Uh, welcome aboard. I need to cue this up, and I'm doing it as a solo tonight. Christelle is uh, busy, so here we go. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks, and it's time for the massive Fukushima update. It's here, guys. Um, you looking at me right there, the guys that are uh, usually coming to my channel, I love you. Uh, you might, if you're not watching this live, want to go to the Mediaspeaks.com, which is the HD camera posted here, where when you, you guys see me looking away, that's where I'm looking. It gets posted up at uh, themediaspeaks.com just as soon as I can make it do it. Let me see if I can make this look better for my uh, low def people. All right, it looks better. All right, guys, do me a favor. Hit subscribe. Hit share. Go to, and if you're on YouTube, hit remix. Because according to my hits, this is where almost all of my views come from on my show. This is what you guys want to see. Well, guess what? Those of you that didn't hit subscribe missed all of the Fukushima that I did last month, except for the Fukushima update. Hit subscribe. I do a lot of it. I let you know about Climate Gate. I let you know about what's going on in the world. And with that, we go into it, friends. It is time for the massive Fukushima update. Why do I do this? I do it because it matters. I do it because I want you guys to share these videos and let other people know what you have learned. And as always, sources for everything, because this is, as Chris Busby said, the worst disaster in all of recorded history. PrisonPlanet.com, Paul Joseph Watson, watchdog, asks government to distribute emergency nuke pills to Canadians. Regulatory group wants all citizens within 10 kilometers of plume area to receive potassium iodide. How in the world? Originally, when, when nuke plants were sold to everybody, they were sold to us under the premise that they were going to, among other things, have this potassium iodide available. Also, NACI and iodine works better. Um, the reason that I'm, I'm even thinking that this is dumb, is this only protects against the elements that are taken into the thyroid. This is, it does nothing for plutonium, nothing for uranium, and they are every bit as deadly as uh, radioactive iodine. Having said that, this does help. And this is another example of how nuclear is just a dreadful, dreadful idea. How anybody could be in favor of this is absolutely alien to me. Um, I don't know. Meanwhile, America uh, tries to build more new plants and, you know, we outsource our jobs. So we've got our best and brightest, not in colleges teaching. No, those are the lucky or the rich. I say that because you're either rich enough to go when you're young or you're lucky enough to have gone at all, in which case you've put yourself in debt. You, there's no really, there's no really good jobs left in the country. The rich people already bought them. So, I mean, we got our best and brightest sitting behind cash registers and in uh, DJ booths and everywhere else, other than where they need to be, which is on the forefront of things like this. The Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission has asked the government to distribute potassium iodide pills to Canadians living within 10 kilometers of nuclear power plants, highlighting lingering concerns over the 2011 Fukushima disaster. Those concerns are well-founded, I might add. Tac tasked with studying how Canada should respond to the Fukushima meltdown, the nuclear watchdog wants authorities to ensure that residents have on hand an adequate stock of the compound that protects the body from radioactive poisoning in the aftermath of severe nuclear incidents. Let, 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 let me interject there due to a rather questionable um, wording there. Love you, PJ Dub. But residents have on hand an adequate stock of the compound that protects the body from some radioactive poisoning in the aftermath of severe nuclear accidents. Let the correct views clarify that. 
CNSC is proposing the tablets be pre-distributed within the plume area of radiation of about 10 kilometers for a selective portion of the population. According to the Canadian press report, in the greater Toronto area, that means about a quarter of a million people. Well, you know, it, those quarter of a million lives don't really matter. All that matters is that they can drag this on for as long as they can to save enough money so that their rich offspring can go to jobs in colleges before the lucky people do. Although many governments supply populations living close to reactors with the pills, Canadians remain unprotected, a problem that environmental groups like Greenpeace and the Canadian Environmental Law Association warn could lead to shortages in the aftermath and chaos of a nuclear accident or evacuation. Uh, do me a favor, friends. Next time you're at a drugstore, try to get potassium iodide. You probably won't be able to. Now you realize how very serious this report really was. Energy producers present at the meeting to discuss the issue yesterday in Ottawa expressed doubts about the program, insisting that Canadians might think that the pills are being forced upon them. Well, that's just Darwinism. If there's a nuclear meltdown, and you're too stupid to take the potassium iodide, then bye. I mean, bye. We don't really need anybody that stupid. I don't mean to be mean, but at this point, we've got people that used to live in Fukushima moving back to Fukushima because they're dumb. Well, this is where I grew up, and this is my home. This is where I'm going to die of the most painful diseases ever. You can only have so much sympathy. I mean... It was stupid to start the reactors, and it's stupid what we're seeing in the aftermath. And it matters, as we see in CommonDreams.org. Fukushima's children are dying. For those of you just tuning in, by the way, I'm seeing my count go up. Welcome to the massive Fukushima update. Also, remember, this is going to be a two-part. I have a lot of Fukushima stories, so I will be here tomorrow as well. There will be two videos. Don't just watch this one. There's one coming after tomorrow. Some 39 months after the multiple explosions at Fukushima, thyroid cancer rates among, near, among nearby children have skyrocketed to more than 40 times normal. That's 40 to 1 for you Lady Gaga fans. More than 48% of some 375,000 young people, nearly 200,000 kids, tested by the Fukushima Medical University near the smoldering reactors now suffer from precancerous thyroid abnormalities. There's a link for that. Primarily nodules and cysts. The rate is accelerating. Therefore, when you hear that Fukushima isn't causing anything, that's because you're not one of the 48% of the children, 375,000 young people, 200,000 small children in that. You're not one of those numbers. Therefore, they don't count, right? Because what they're finding are growths and abnormalities that become cancer in almost half of the people there. You people living in California, Washington, Oregon, Hawaii, and uh, certain parts of Alaska that keep laughing at me in Canada, you're going to see. And unfortunately, I'm not happy with what you're going to see because you're shortening your lives by staying there. Oh, but it's where I'm going to school. Oh, but it's where my family is. It's where you're going to get very, very sick and it's where you're going to die. Move! More than 120 childhood cancers have been indicated where just three would be expected. Usually before Fukushima, three. After Fukushima, 120 childhood cancers. This is according to Joseph Mangano, Executive Director of the Radiation and Public Health Project. The nuclear industry and its apologists continue to deny the public health tragedy. Some have actually asserted that no one person has been affected by Fukushima's massive radiation releases, which of some isotopes exceed Hiroshima, for you top 40 fans, that's where the bomb went off, by a factor of nearly 30. That is huge, friends. I want to thank AJ Illuminati for getting this uh, article to my attention. 
Uh, the deadly epidemic at Fukushima is consistent with impacts suffered among children near the 1979 accident at Three Mile Island and the 1986 explosion at Chernobyl, as well as findings at other commercial reactors. Um, I quote Helen Caldicott, Do not eat Hershey anything. Why? Because Hershey is very close to Three Mile Island. That happened in 1979. Those radioisotopes that cause cancer are mere infants in their lives compared to the disaster they will bring upon you. How can she prove this? Dr. Caldicott's been saying it forever, and she's never once been sued by Hershey because they know better. They know she's got the facts. Don't eat it! It's death! The likelihood, it goes on, that atomic power could cause such epidemics has been confirmed by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, for those that say I don't give sources, which says that an increase in the risk of childhood thyroid cancer would accompany a reactor a disaster. In evaluating the prospects of new reactor construction in Canada, it says the commission claims the rate would raise by only 0.03% at a distance of 12 kilometers from the accident. But that assumes that the distribution of protective potassium iodide pills, which, as we mentioned earlier, only covers certain elements, and a successful emergency evacuation, which has never happened, neither of which happened at Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, or Fukushima. Therefore, as long as we do everything the way we've never done it, everything will be great. The numbers have been analyzed by Mangiano. He has studied the impacts of reactor-created radiation on human health since the 1980s, beginning his work with the legendary radiologist Dr. Ernest Sternglass and statistician Jay Gold. Speaking on the Green Power and Wellness Show, Mangiano also confirms that the general health among downwind populations improves when atomic reactors are shut down and goes into decline when they open or reopen. Every time they shut a nuclear power plant down, the cancer rates go down. So what should we do? We should shut the nuclear power plants down. Nearby children are not the only casualties at Fukushima. Plant operator Moshio Yoshida has died at the age of 58 of esophageal cancer. We'll mention that again tomorrow. Maceo heroically refused to abandon Fukushima at the worst of the crisis, probably saving millions of lives. And again, I'm sorry that the man died. He was a hero. He should have never worked there. He should have listened to the studies that told him how deadly it was. Workers at the site who are employed by independent contractors, many dominated by organized crime, are often not being monitored for radiation exposure at all. Public anger is rising over government plans to force families, many with small children, back into heavily contaminated regions around the plant. Following the 1979 accident, it goes on, Three Mile Island's owners denied the reactor had melted, but a robotic camera later confirmed otherwise. Later, after the people of Pennsylvania were told uh, a lie at first, and in brought into their bodies untold elements that are causing heart disease and cancer. It's entered their DNA. It was passed on to their children since 79, and it happened to you if you ate Hershey's too. You got to you listen to this? You know somebody that's got uh, a, a kid with cancer born after 79? Bomb testing, meltdowns, nuclear. If it's nuclear, it's bad. And that's the way I'm going with it. Thorium BS too. It's just less bad. The state of Pennsylvania mysteriously killed its tumor registry, then said there was no evidence that anyone had been killed. Well, yeah, when you mysteriously can't find the list of people that were registered to have tumors, it's amazing how all the problems go away. If you're in a mutual fund and there's a nuclear plant in it, you're part of the problem. Get out of it. A wide range of independent studies confirm heightened infant death rates and excessive cancers among the general population. Excessive death, mutation, and disease rates among local animals were confirmed by the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture and local journalists. You look at Miss Milky the Clown site, it's happening again. We've got leaves growing within leaves all over the area where the fallout hit for Fukushima. 
It says in the 80s, federal judge Rambo blocked a class action suit by 2,400 Pennsylvania downwinders claiming not enough radiation escaped to harm anyone. But after 35 years, no one knows how much radiation escaped or where it went. And meanwhile, they just died without any compensation at all. It says the Chernobyl, the death toll was more than a hundred thousand, no, more than a million people, excuse me, one million people. Um, it talks about the radiation effects, of course, we've covered that here a lot, that are downwind in Belarus and the Ukraine. Uh, friends, we've got children, half the children, developing thyroid abnormalities and cancers. This is caused by nuclear anything. The meltdown at Fukushima but I just gave you a whole lot of information, and there's more on that site dealing with Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, let's not forget Mavec, which was slightly different, and the disaster in England, and on and on and on. Let's not forget that if a dam breaks in the U.S., we're guaranteed a meltdown in the southern United States, exactly like Fukushima's. It says the great, I'm going to cover this real quick, Michael Snyder, The American Dream. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. We are literally filling the Pacific Ocean with plastic. And it talks about the amount of trash that's being picked up in the middle of the ocean from all the plastic that's thrown away. Plastic attracts radiation like a sponge and it doesn't biodegrade. And we're seeing a lot of death in the animals, and they're, they're saying it's from the plastic. This plastic has been there way long, way long. I'm really not one of these greeny weenies that think that the plastic is the death of man or anything. But it breaks down into little pellets. And since then, attracts massive amounts of radiation. And, of course, we eat the fish that eat the pellets. You might want to read the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but I'm going to read you enough of it to you'll get the point. It says, We are starting to see that there are very serious consequences for filling up our oceans with massive amounts of plastic that never biodegrades. Well, how it gets out there, for one thing. In fact, this is one of the greatest environmental disasters of all time, and yet you rarely hear or talk about it. Virtually every molecule of plastic ever created still exists somewhere, and we all use the things made out of plastic every single day. But if you ever stop to think about what happens to all of that plastic, well, the truth is that a lot of it ends up in our oceans. Um, of course, the, the Pacific Trash Vortex, it's very, very big. It's 200 billion pounds of plastic every year going in. It says, when people hear the term giant Pacific garbage patch, they expect to find millions of plastic bottles floating around out there. But that's not what we're dealing with. You see, when plastic gets into the ocean, it never biodegrades, but it does photograde. Well, salt breaks everything down, so I would question that, but we'll go on. So what we end up with is a plastic soup of billions upon billions of microscopic pieces of plastic some are approximately the size of your pinky fingernail, but many pieces are, in fact, much smaller. And um, it's huge. It's, it's as big as a continent. And it's... it's my point is, that's why I'm tying it into the Fukushima update, is that 35% of the fish caught had at least two pieces of plastic in their stomach. And we know that plastic attracts radiation so that's not good news friends um, it says in addition to all the plastic in the ocean it is also certainly possible that the Fukushima nuclear disaster is playing a huge role in the enormous changes that have been witnessed in the Pacific true to that much more of that please see my previous article Japan begins purposely dumping uh, hundreds of tons of radioactive water into the ocean I've covered that before in any event it is undeniable that conditions in the Pacific Ocean are getting worse with each passing year and that is true and again I'm not one of these people that think that we can live without plastic but it seems to me we should be able to make sure that the majority of it doesn't end up into the ocean 
Um, friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Angie reporting for the Media Speaks with uh, half of this month's massive Fukushima update. The other half happens tomorrow. Uh, look up the written works of um, Mike McLaughlin. He writes really good stories. He's always posting poems and stuff. Go to Facebook.com and look up Mike McLaughlin. Also, if you get a chance, look up a novel called A Sleep Unknowing. Or look up a short story called The Lucky Leprechaun or a persuasive essay about Jesus Christ and his resurrection called Risen. All three of those are written by me and you can get them on Amazon.com. Friends, this is... Um, I'm going to go bounce straight to this here. It's the very last thing I'm going to go ahead and get to today. The dumdy of the day for Fukushima update. Again, we will be doing more and more and more, more Fukushima tomorrow. FDA advises pregnant women to eat more low mercury fish. Eating fish is poison, idiots. It's the way. Pregnant women, get some fish oil and take your fish oil. Always ask your doctor first, but don't eat fish. And don't listen to you when your doctor says, well, there's not enough radiation in the water to hurt you. Because that's not true at all. I have a million doctors that are on my side on this. Pregnant women, do not eat fish if you think it came from the Pacific Ocean. Try not to eat much out of the Atlantic Ocean. If it's raised privately, then make sure it doesn't have mercury. Don't eat fish. U.S. regulators recommended on Tuesday that pregnant women, nursing mothers, and women who might become pregnant increase the amount of low mercury fish that they eat between 8 ounces to 12 ounces a week as they issued a long-awaited draft update to their advance on mercury levels in seafood. In other words, pregnant women, nursing mothers, and women who might become pregnant, radiate your children, give them breast milk, and cause them to have cancers and to give birth to deformed children by eating fish. The draft update by the Food and Drug Administration and Environmental Protection Agency, no wonder Ron Paul wanted to get rid of them, is the first since 2004 and has been eagerly awaited by scientists and advocacy groups, and might I add cancer treatment specialists, that argue that exposure to mercury may be more dangerous at lower levels than previously thought. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's let's inject ourselves with mercury vaccines and let's eat radioactive fish for the good of the children. Twelve ounces of seafood a week is now the minimum. That's ridiculous. You're going to poison yourself and your children. The proposed update, which is subject to public comment, retains the recommendation that pregnant women eat swordfish, shark, king, merkel, tilefish, though they narrowed the warning on tilefish that may include only fish from the Gulf of Mexico. Guys, if you're eating fish for any reason, it had better be raised privately in a low mercury organic environment. Just about every other fish that you're going to consume is toxic. And a lot of the processed fish mixes fish. Don't go by where it's distributed from. They're mixing the fish. And if it comes out of the Pacific Ocean, it's freaking poison. That is a correct view. As in, it's not up for debate. Uh, friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. We're going to go ahead tomorrow and do part two of the massive Fukushima update. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe, share the video, leave a comment. Hit subscribe because I'm posting all the time. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all the time. And uh, might I say, lastly, if you want to donate to the show, you can do so at TheCorrectViews at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes to a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.